<laughs> like there was no wisdom there. It was all feelings. Like, Ooh. wow, he's hot. That's all that matters. No one else matters. No one's opinion matters. Mm. But mine, like the only thing that matters is my feelings and my flesh. And that just got me in a lot of trouble. What's up, y'all? Welcome back for another episode of Succeeding in Singleness. My name is Janae, and I'm your host for this podcast. Now, in this podcast, you're going to succeed in your singleness. Why? Because I'm not giving you another choice, okay? I want this for you. I want it for myself, but also God wants this for you. He wants you to succeed in every part of your life, and that includes your dating season and whatever comes next, okay? Like marriage. You want marriage, right? I know I do. Now, the great thing about this podcast is that we bring in awesome people and that is no different from today. And I have Sam with me and I'm going to have her introduce herself. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on. I love the podcast Succeeding in Singleness. I've been watching and you just crack me up. So I am honored to be on the podcast. Uh, my name is Samantha Vinu. I am the podcast host of Single Status Podcast. So I started that over a year ago. I felt really called to encourage singles in our single season because I know it can be kind of hard in our culture. Um, so I'm really happy and honored to have that podcast. And other than that, I work at a mortgage company. I uh, am a homeowner. I have a cute little puppy, Ginny. If you're yeah. on my Instagram, you'll probably see her a lot pop up in my reels and stuff. But um, other than that, yeah, I'm just trying, honestly, I'm just trying to succeed in my singleness right now and just live my life. Um, I'm 32 years old, just turned 32 in October. Wow. So I'm just looking forward to the new year too. Same. Look, we, yeah. look, we're going to do what we need to do. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. In years to come about our single season. Cause look, we trying to like, Lord, let's wrap this up. Right. Right. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> right. Right. Um, let's maximize so we can move to the next. No. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. um, but it goes right into the topic, honestly, for today, which is one of the biggest dating questions is why are you single? Uh, now, what we do here on the episode, which I, you know, try to find some kind of way to incorporate this is called girl, girl, girl. Let's get real. Mm -hmm. So Sam, do you have a story that you want to tell that relates to like, you know, why are you single or have somebody ever asked you, why are you single? Give us something. I think I haven't really been asked that on like a date or something, but I, I definitely have been asked that from like family members uh -huh. or friends. They're like, how are you still single? Like, why are you single? And um, it's an interesting question. And sometimes you could take offense to it, but then mm -hmm. other times it's like, okay, I kind of get what they mean. <laughs> like, why am I single? <laughs> <laughs> um, but really like on a deeper note and on a real note, I think, I, I think I'm single because of two reasons. Mm -hmm. um, the first reason is I was in a really long relationship in my 20s. And, you know, I was young. I was I was learning a lot about myself and about life. And I'm I uh, was saved at 22. Mm -hmm. So my journey with Christ has been learning from my own mistakes. And so I was in, a again, a really long relationship in my 20s that probably went too long. Mm -hmm. um, but so I needed I needed time once once that relationship ended, I needed time to heal. I didn't want to just jump back into a relationship. That's so good. I really needed, I actually took a year off dating. And wow. I, because I knew that I needed to heal. I knew I needed to grow in my relationship with the Lord and myself. And I wanted to learn how to be content in my singleness and content with just God. Um, because I knew that if I didn't figure that out, it would impact a future relationship. Um, so that's the first reason I believe I'm, I'm single yeah. right now. And the second reason is just because I have standards. <laughs> How about so, that? <laughs> and um, I know it probably it might sound like it might come off or people might think it sounds cocky or something. But, so? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the reality is we could both have a boyfriend right we now. And she hit the nail <laughs> on the head. We could, you know, we can't pull up. We can. Keep yes, going. we could both be married. <laughs> If we wanted to, Come we could on. both be married. Um, but the reality is we're not just looking for anyone. I'm not just looking for anyone. I'm looking for a relationship that's life giving, that's fulfilling, that I can add to his life and he can add to my life. So uh, I'm waiting on the right person. I'm waiting on God and I'm not going to settle 
if it's not of God, if I don't have peace about it, and if this man is not a good man. Y'all all right? And there are a lot of really great men out there that I have dated. Well, not mm-hmm. a lot, but um, I have There's dated some. <laughs> I have dated some really good men, but they just weren't right for me. We weren't right for each mm-hmm. other, and we knew it. So. No, I think that definitely happens where you just like you can see it. You 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 start seeing it. I should say. Uh, you like. No, nah, that's not it. That's not it. And yeah. I think we all know that we know. I think I have enough people in my life where they knew. They knew. And I'm like, we can experience that too. We're going yes. to know that we know. Okay. Yeah. If he makes, you know, a lot of things clear for us in other areas of our lives, he's going to make it clear for us for this. And we're not just going to take anything and whatever. And when a smoke, you know, clear is not, we like, oh yeah, hold on. Your tag, not it. No, we're going to know from the beginning yeah. if this person is correct and right. So with the year off dating, um, how was that for you? What like specifically did God, re- did, what is one thing that God revealed to you that can help the listeners um, that, yeah, what did he reveal to you in that year that can help the listeners um, when it comes to just having time to themselves and not always having to be on a date? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in that season, I really, one, it's important if you have been in a really long relationship that you do take time to like grieve the relationship. Mm. So I think a lot of times in our culture, especially people just jump right into another relationship and think that that's going to be their healing and that's when they're going to feel better. Mm. And I really felt like what I learned is the importance of grieving, you Mm -hmm. know, and like feeling our feelings. And um, I think that is a, a cool part of singleness that not enough people talk about is, it gives us space to learn how to like feel our feelings. Mm, yes. And it's, yes. it shouldn't be a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. Cause I mean, I started therapy too last year, which mm-hmm. has been really good. And I asked my therapist, I'm like, is it weird that I have like some, the one minute I'm sad and I'm crying. And then the next second I'm like laughing and skipping down the street. Right. <laughs> What's that? Mm-hmm. She's like, no, actually that's really healthy that you're like that. Um, or that I've learned to be like that. I've learned mm-hmm. to feel my feelings. So I think that has really helped me, um, that time of being alone for a year or, or not really looking to date for a year. Uh, it helped me feel my feelings. It helped me learn how to grieve a past relationship and give myself space. Um, but I think really just seeking God and, and learning how to be comfortable you know, with ourselves and, and Mm -hmm. have fun on our own and do things on our own and really discover like who we are as a person. Cause God gave us unique gifts and talents and, and purposes that if we don't spend time with ourselves, like we're never really going to discover that. That's really big because I, I, when you said that, it made me think about just like learning how to be silent, how to learn how to be silent because a lot of people, you have some people, I don't know if you ever have a conversation with somebody or if you're on the phone with them or if you're in the same space as them, they don't like silence. They want to fill the space automatically up. And I'm like, no, learn how to sit still, be still, and be to yourself and invite yeah. God in now. Nah. But right, like, right. be to yourself. And I think that's a really good point to make. So if you haven't done that, let's make a challenge for this week, whatever day you're watching it, to have some quiet time um, in the presence of God, but also just with yourself. You you don't always have to have the TV going. You don't always have to have to be on the phone or have something playing or have always have to have a guy around or fellas. If you have always have to have a girl around, let's figure that out. I think that's a really good point now. And I think before we even go to the next one, my pastor was just talking about how our society, we're so distracted all the time. And I think it has it does go along yeah. the lines of like dating too. And sometimes mm-hmm. we just want to jump on the dating apps and get these distractions. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it causes us to not reflect on our life and reflect on where can I improve? What can I do better? Like what have I learned from my past relationship? What do I, how can I prepare for marriage today? So it's good to have that silence so we can reflect and we can grow and we can prepare for marriage one day. So are you telling us that, they're not the problem. We we can also be <laughs> exactly the problem, or we can also have to work on ourselves. Like what? Like no, that's exactly it. Yeah. If we do not slow down, we don't have time or give space for God to 
um, heal, to mold, to mend, whatever we just experienced because we didn't jump to the next thing. And a lot of us do that. And it can be in any area of our life. We just go to the next thing as if that did not happen. And it can also be in celebrating things in your life, right? I know the way I used to operate was just like, okay, I got this opportunity. Okay, bet. What's the next one? And I'm like, you like, no, sit in this. Mm -hmm. be happy my one friend was like girl let's go out to dinner like this is a really big thing that you just uh, accomplished so it can be on both sides both ends about just like sit still in the in the highs but also in the lows and really cherish each That's moment good. like this is it's nothing to play with I, um not nothing to play with that sounded deep but you're like this is nothing to just like look over right. or to coast over um god really wants us to do that and i think this goes right into the next question of just like do you think that's what could be really hard for people that's dating right now? Does that is that one of the things that could make it super hard for people to date? Um, or is there something else that you've seen that makes it really hard for people to date at this time and age? And yeah. Yeah, I think that I think it can be challenging because people have so many options with dating apps and stuff like that. And we can kind of just try and jump right to the next person or I think it's also a millennial thing where we just want like instant gratification all the time she's calling us out <laughs> <laughs> yes and we need to learn how to have patience mm -hmm. and and it's really hard actually like it, I'm saying it like it's easy but it's very hard to wait on the right person um but you know there's been times where I've you know I, I get in my feelings and I jump on a dating app and then I just sometimes feel like I don't think I'm supposed to be on here right now and I feel like that's a little pull from God. I don't think he's mad at me for being on there. He's like, girl, do your thing, you know? And he's probably like chuckling, laughing at me mm -hmm. just because I'm trying to maneuver my way <laughs> <laughs> to my next, uh, to my future husband. But, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I just, I feel like I am trying to kind of fill a void or make things happen on my own. And God kind of gives me the side eye like, okay, girl, calm down. Girl. We, but I, I think that, um, when you say like what's why is it difficult to date or you know what's the difficult part about it I think that in this day and age too we are all so isolated and behind our phones and it's so important as single people that we get out in community mm -hmm. like I I don't talk um bad about dating apps because I think for people that don't get out in community like mm -hmm. it is a good option for people but um like if we want to meet someone naturally or organically we need to be out in community we need yeah. to find a good church home that we can hang out with people at and meet new friends mm -hmm. we need to be out with our friends we need to be getting maybe a hobby or Get workout hobby. classes or whatever to yes. meet people we can't expect some man to show up on our doorstep so yes it would be nice but that no. would be amazing <laughs> But it's not a thing, okay? <laughs> wow. No, I think that's really real. Um, a lot of us are trying to rush things, and so we just do whatever and try to make it make sense after the fact. And it's like, no, no. Because a lot of us is like, where's the return receipt? Like, nope, too late. You already made the purchase. So mm -hmm. we have to really take time to really dig deeper into, like, these certain things so that we're just not doing anything. And also, because we have made it hard, now we want to give up. And it's like, well... Well, no, it doesn't have to. We didn't have to get to that point if we just take our time. How have you matured over the years when it comes to your approach or your attitude when it comes to dating? That's a really good question. I think ever since I really started on this journey with God at 22, it's been 10 years now, mm -hmm. which is wild. But I everything has changed. Everything has changed. I think of dating before that. Mm -hmm. I was a basket case. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would admit. <laughs> Like, there was no wisdom there. It was all feelings. Like, wow, he's hot. That's all that matters. No one else matters. No one's opinion matters. Mm. But mine, like, the only thing that matters is my feelings and my flesh. And that just got me in a lot of trouble, you know? And um, so God has really taught me the importance of, like, wisdom and using wisdom to when we're dating and inviting him into the dating process and praying before I go on dates and and really seeking God and even, uh, you know, asking friend, trusted friends for advice. And I say trusted friends because not all friends give good advice. Uh -oh. <laughs> Feedback. Mm -hmm. Like you need to know who you can trust. Yeah. But um, it's interesting because when you start talking to people you really trust about the people you're dating, 
even if you like them, you can kind of tell what their thoughts are, even if they aren't saying it. Like it's written yes. all over their face. Yes. I was I felt like I was dating this guy and I felt like I was trying to force it. And I was sharing it with my aunt, actually. And I was like, oh, you know, I was telling her about it. And she's like, do you feel like you're forcing it a little bit? And I was like, no. <laughs> but <Me>? I went <laughs> I went home and I was, you know, uh, like ready, getting ready for bed. And I like went to sleep on my pillow. And I was like, I'm totally forcing it. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah, it's like she totally called me out. So I think those trusted people, mm-hmm. it actually listening to them. So I think. Yes, I have really matured in this area because I'm now using wisdom. I'm inviting God into the situation and I'm actually listening to other people's opinion that I trust. Ooh, Ooh, y'all are right. I'm telling you, when people say stuff good, it hits me too. And I'm like, I just have to check in with y'all. Are you okay? (laughs) Okay, y'all felt that, didn't you? Because that is so real. That is something where it's just like, I'm not trying to force it. Like, I'm not. I am. I am. Yeah. Like you just right. I am. Okay. Okay. Um, now one of the things that uh I wanted to ask you was that uh what are some sacrifices or uprooting you talked about it earlier, right? We keep saying like she's overlapping, but I still want to make sure like what else can we dig out because she has a lot of wisdom, y'all. That's why I'm still asking these certain questions. Is that what have you had to uproot uh as we also say unlearn when it comes to dating or um, just certain things you had to do so you can get to this point in your life to be able mm-hmm. to even talk about or and even have the platform of the single status? Mm-hmm. That's a really good question. I think, I think the biggest thing that I had to uproot is the fact that I am complete in Christ and I don't need a man to complete me. I was definitely... I felt like in the past I looked at men to complete me and I felt really alone and really incomplete without a guy to the point where I didn't want to go to like events alone Mm. or I didn't want to do things alone or I felt embarrassed that I wasn't married yet or I felt embarrassed that I was single at you know 29 and then 30 and and it's like it's nothing to be embarrassed about like why do we have this shame about it and Um, so yes, I think that it's really, I've learned to, I've learned that in Christ and when we're walking in alignment with him and the way he wants us to do things, right? we can really experience wholeness in this season. And then we can be such like, it's kind of exciting thinking that because we've worked on ourselves and because we have found wholeness in God, mm-hmm. how much better we will show up to our next relationship. And these men are about to be Ooh. lucky men. Okay. They're about to be blessed. You're welcome. <laughs> no, that is a reminder right there. We have put in the work, and I'm not just going to let anybody else come in and mess that up, nor am I going to mess you up. So I'm going to make sure I, to do the work. I yep. want to make sure to do the work and be better. Um, and so that I make sure that I'm so in the right season to this man. We, we have to be mindful that we can sow seeds and we don't know what type of seeds they are. So you want to make sure that you are sowing good to good ground. And, and that's what I, I see when we are able to uproot certain things and remove certain things or sacrifice things that we used to do or, um, block the guys that we used to say, Hey, once a year, like, you know, there's mm-hmm. type of things are like removing people. And I think that's one of the things that I had to do was sacrifice, um, um, my list. I said it. My mm. I, they say a little black li- little black book. <laughs> I, I had that. <laughs> yes. I knew guys that I could like text and call with no problem to go out, to hang out, or whatever like that. And I'm like, you have to leave them alone. Mm. If you want to move forward properly, if you don't want to experience what you experienced in the past, if you want to break this cycle that you have created, because I said I created it, I know what I was doing. Um, I have to remove them. There's nothing, there's no reason to go backwards. There's right. nothing back there. I always think about Lot's wife. And I'm like, I'm not looking back for no reason at all, at all. So right. that's why I wanted to, that's why I had to do in that so I can move forward properly. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. And I think even with that, we can, uh, I think we kind of talked about, because we had an episode on, on. Check it out. Single status podcast too. Yeah. But I think we can go completely the opposite too so yes we don't want to go back and I I've literally had to 
force myself not to like text an ex or text or you know because we get in our feelings and we're like no i need to call me it's like nope don't do it Mm -mm. um so yes don't look back and then also i think as christians we can go so far the other way where we think that we need to settle with the first man of god that we come across even if he's like a really good man it doesn't always it doesn't always mean that he's the man for you and i learned that the past year Mm -hmm. because i felt like i was really trying to force it with someone and i felt like god said to me i'm you don't this is what god said to me i felt like god said to me I'm not going to force you to be with someone. Mm, mm, mm. He said, the person I have for you, you're going to love too. Like you're going to want to be with that person and it's going to feel right. And I really learned from that, that I also don't want to force it just because he's a good man. I think that's a good reminder that we all have to have. And every time somebody find Papa, take your time. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Oh, it's so good because it's like they are attractive. They 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 serve. They got all the things on a list, and it does not equal that that's your man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sometimes it's just not it, <laughs> and it's it's challenging though. It's challenging. Tear. But God has more. There's He will bring more options to you, and He's got our back. He really does. Oh, what a reminder. Two more questions, I think. But what's something that people are missing or not tapping into when it comes to their single season? I think that really, uh, I don't think people are tapping into community enough. Because I think that when we're single, it's an opportunity for us to really build our own community. Mm-hmm. True, And I feel like it's, actually not very often i come across someone that has really formed their own like friends and like stepped out and kind of found a church that they like or got their own hobbies got their own stuff going on and i think a lot of people need someone to always like be with them to kind of form their own community of people and um i think that's what's really transformed my life in a way is is stepping out and going to a church by myself, even though I felt uncomfortable at first. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I need, you know, I felt called to be going to this church. um, And I've met so many different people. And I have a really strong community now that I feel really supported by in this season. So I know I'm not alone. And even just, you know, going out and doing fun things in at this time yeah um so i think that a lot of people just feel like they have to kind of stay at home and wait on someone else to kind of really have fun and live their life and and even just go to church like Mm -hmm. people are scared to go to church by themselves scared to go to the movies by themselves or go to dinner and stuff like that but um i think it's a really cool opportunity that we can step out and learn how to be content doing things on our own. And there's so many connections that God will bring when we step out and do it. Like he will bring friends. He will bring community to you. That's encouraging and uplifting. Oh, another challenge. It sounds like go outside and, and find community. <laughs> like what? Yep. Like, so if you are not involved in church or at your church, that's one way to do it. Like as she mentioned, like, Join a team and see how you can serve. And that's how you find people. Yeah. And I remember I literally felt like I had no women in my life that Mm. had the same beliefs as me Mm -hmm. Uh, early in my walk with God. And I remember praying like, Lord, send me women that I could do life with that believe that love me or that love me. Well, yes, I want them to love me, too. But that love Jesus as much as me. You know, like I want people that are also passionate because I look crazy yes. to these other people sometimes. <laughs> I'm not like, no. But uh, when I, because I stepped out and started going to church by myself and started like serving and doing different things, he really just opened up the reins. And I have a, like a flood of people in my life now that have the same beliefs as me that I'm like doing life with. And he's restored relationships in my family and friends um, that – it's, it's just awesome what prayer can do, too. Mm-hmm. So if you feel like alone or you are scared to meet new friends or step out, just pray and God will help you and he'll send people to you. That's really good. 
is there anything that you want to leave them with um, in this episode that you're just like, look, if you don't get anything else, do this or know this? I think just really just understanding that I don't think that because you are waiting on the right person, it means that you're too picky. Mm. You know what I mean? I think sometimes we get in our heads like I'm way too picky or I need to kind of settle at this point in my life or maybe I'm getting older and, you know, if it's it's now or never or something like that. But I think that at the right time, God will send someone if we're really, you know, seeking him. We still have this desire and we are out in community meeting people and stuff like that. Like the right person will come at the right time. And again, I know I said this before, but he's not going to force you to be with someone. So wait on the right person and it will feel right uh, with the right person. Thank you for that's that. That's really just on my heart right now, I guess. No, yeah, no, I think that's really good because I just told myself that recently because I was I was trying to, you know, I was trying to talk to someone that, you know, was a little shorter than me or like a little bit, you know, not what I normally go for. And I'm like, you know, you like what you like, Janae. We don't have to start just experimenting so, to show that, oh, look, everybody, I'm evolving. I'm not stuck in just this yeah. one type of person. But it's like, no, you like what you like. So that means just be patient in the journey. But also, too, I'm st- also trying to make sure I'm just open to what God wants to have for me and right. who it is. Um, so I'm doing a good balance of both. I'd rather do a right. good balance of both than just going on one extreme of no. This I like this, this, and this, period. Right. Or another stream is like, whatever comes. And it's like, girl, hold on. Um, so trying to find that good balance is what I just was reminded of what you said. I have to do that because now, because it goes back to now I'm just taking whatever because I just want to make sure I get somebody and I don't want that mindset moving forward. Um, That's good. So I had to come back. To, I was like, Janae, no, we, we're going to have a balance of this because you're just doing whatever at this point. But it's, it's very funny because what I, the last discussion I want to ask you is that, um, and I'm going to share first and I want you to share is that what is one thing that God is telling you to do um, concerning 2024 um, and when it comes to, cause we're talking about being single. Okay, folks. Um, but what is one thing God is telling you concerning 2024 on how you should approach it? Uh, for me, he's telling me that I actually need to wait and not date right now. Mm. And first of all, so I have to wait until I'm done with school. So to not look at nobody, to not bat an eye, to like, wow. just to be, and I've already been through that season. So to have to go through it again, it's like, did I do something? <laughs> what i do but i'm realizing that i can get easily distracted and i have a Mm. a goal right now and i just don't want to bring anybody in or just take whatever and what i got has placed on both of us honestly we can't just have anyone attach ourselves to just anyone because they have to be able to support us understand what we're doing and help us grow in this area and that's what we want so god has revealed that to me that for 2024 I cannot bat an eye at somebody until I graduate. That's good. That's good. Yeah, because he will have us in seasons where, like I said, I was on a break from dating for a whole year. And it he will put you in those seasons. But there's so much fruit that comes out of it. Yes. So that's good that you're being obedient to that. Um, I think for me, with dating specifically in 2024, as we go into this new year, I think he's just really been teaching me patience. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, I think he's been giving me the green light to date, but not be like aggressively or like desperately looking for someone. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I, I can be really shy when it comes to guys at first and be totally like not even look or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, not put myself out there. So I think he has been giving me the green light to like, OK, you need to show interest in them. Because they're not just always going to know. Yeah. So I've been trying to get more comfortable with that and not like so in my head. So kind of just getting more comfortable with if I do see someone maybe at church or like out somewhere or even in the work that I'm doing and like podcasting world and social media and stuff. It's okay to kind of just make sure that a guy knows I'm interested if I am interested. Just put it out there and then he can pursue if it's on his heart there it is um leave yours down below as well if you want to share with us about what it is um especially if you are watching via 
YouTube. And yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode with Sam. Really good. And so glad that we was able to come together and do this. Sam, once again, let them know how to find you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It was such a fun conversation. And you can find me at my Instagram at Samantha Venue. V-I-G-N-E-A-U is my last name. Um, and Single Status Podcast is on YouTube, on Apple, Spotify, all the podcast platforms, so you can find me there as well. Awesome. And once again, for Succeeding in Singleness, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Succeeding in Singleness. And if you are listening via podcast, be sure to also check out our YouTube where we have a video version of the podcast and you can enjoy the facial expressions, all the things that you see, <laughs> can't see really when you're just listening in. And yeah, y'all, I want to see y'all in the next episode.